Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk again, and today I'm going to show you about how I made the hip pod pieces for my Iron Man suit. Most of the other pieces I've made from foam and then basically moulded and cast, and this one I decided to do slightly differently. So I've actually designed this piece in CAD. I've used Autodesk 123D, which is currently a free download. It's totally free, you have to register, but apart from that it's free. It's um, specifically designed for manufacturing, so it outputs STL files which are used for 3D printing. So here's the piece that I uh, designed in here. This is my seventh attempt at making the piece, and I'd never actually done any 3D CAD before. So um, most of that, those seven attempts were learning how to use the software. I've made it completely hollow, it's less than a millimetre thick, so that's to save plastic on 3D printing. So. I don't have a 3D printer, so I decided to use Shapeways, which is basically a manufacturing company where you can upload designs for 3D printing and they'll make it in various materials for you. So if I just move my camera over here, this morning a box arrived with Shapeways written on it, which is very exciting. Let's see what's inside. Thank you for ordering with Shapeways. And in fact, there's actually more packaging than this, it's very well packed. Um, in fact, what we've got is the physical piece. There we go. It's uh, made of their white, flexible and strong plastic, which is a basically the basic plastic. It's fairly um, flexible, as I say, it's less than a millimetre thick. I'd probably want to reinforce it for... I was actually going to wear it on the costume. And obviously I've only got one anyway, but I'll tell you about what I'm planning to do in a moment. If we just put this back over here. There we go. So, uh, yep, obviously it's come out exactly as designed. And um, it's absolutely perfect. So, if you want one of these, you can actually buy one from my Shapeway store. So if you go to my website, xraybots.co.uk, there's a big logo here for Shapeways. That's my Shapeway store where you can actually buy this item. It's various pictures and a nice 3D animation of the thing spinning around provided by Shapeways. So you can buy it direct from Shapeways and they'll manufacture one like this or in various other materials and ship it straight to you. Alright, so my basic plan is that I've only got one as I say because it's not actually that cheap for 3D printing. So the plan is going to be to make a mould from this in silicon and cast two solid ones in polyurethane fast cast, which will obviously be much stronger as well. So the next piece of the video I'm going to show you how to make a silicon mould and how to make a cast. Right now we're ready to make the mould from the piece, which is in this box. So let me just grab the camera and show you, you and just see it in there. So I've basically packed the piece with clay make it heavy and it's also stuck to the bottom of this box and I've made this surround so basically we're going to pour silicon in there and the very important thing is that one the piece doesn't float obviously being hollow if I just left it as it was it would it would just float to the top hence packing it with clay and sticking it to the bottom of the box the other bad thing that can happen is the box leaks so this basically is all sealed all the way around with hot glue to stop the silicon leaking out so basically I'm just going to pour silicon on top of there which should take all of the detail and make a negative mould and that's what we're going to do the final cast from. So I've got Repsil silicon which is just a tin cure sort of cheap silicon that you can buy in the UK. I've already poured out the base there which is 400 grams and I need to add the catalyst at 5%. This is hazardous, you should wear gloves. So I just need to put 20 grams in there, mix it around. Not sure if that's enough, I might have to do another batch. But I need to pour it in quite carefully to make sure it goes into all the details as well. So it's not a bad thing to do it in two goes. So let's just, uh... oops, a bit over. Doesn't really matter. Just means it'll cure a bit quicker. So, and I'm gonna give that a good mix without spilling it all over myself. This silicon has a pink catalyst, which means that you can see when it's mixed properly. See if it's really streaky, then it's not mixed. 
and when it's all nice and pink then you know it's mixed so some silicons have a clear catalyst and it's not so easy to tell so that's all looking fairly consistent next thing I'm going to do is pour it into another container so that there's none stuck around the edges and then mix it again I tend not to pour it everywhere right. that's the most I can scrape out so I'll just give that another mix that should be all nice and consistent and pink Pour that in there, starting with the lowest points of the mould first, so it fills up from the bottom and there's no air trapped. Of course any air bubbles rise upwards, which mean they rise above, uh, they rise away from the piece, which is quite handy. So the piece should be left with no bubbles, unless any get trapped in any features. So, concerned about those screw holes around the edge. So I might just tilt that around a bit very carefully. It's not fixed to the bottom quite as much as I thought it was. As long as it doesn't float, we'll be fine. I'm just going to give that a poke in those holes there. See bubbles rising to the surface. I've just got to be careful with this middle feature as well. So I'll just put a bit in. Let it sink in all the way around. Doesn't look like this is going to be enough to cover it, so I'll mix up another batch. To make sure we've got a lovely thick mould in the end. So, now let's put the rest in. Just need a little bit more. Give it half an inch or an inch above the actual piece. Alright, let's mix up some more. So I've mixed up another 100 grams just to cover the top. Still see the shape obviously, we need to cover that. So... This is uh, roughly a 24 hour cure silicon. After a bit, about six hours it's basically solid and then it gets uh, firmer overnight. So in the morning we can come back and demold it probably. And we can make a cast from this later on tomorrow. So see bubbles rising to the surface which means they're not stuck to the piece which is what we want hopefully they'll eventually burst and then the uh, looks like I might need another batch actually it's a bit of a lump still anyway I'll do another another hundred grams and then the, the uh, top will of course be flat eventually and uh, when we take the piece out that makes the bottom of the mold the whole thing flips upside down leaving the hole in the bottom the shape of the piece so uh, I'll put some more in that and we'll leave it to cure overnight and then tomorrow we'll make a cast. Okay, so it's the next morning. Silicon's fairly firm, so I'm just going to tear all this apart. And uh, to get this out of here. So that's the bottom, you can see the uh, thing full of clay there, which we should be able to just pop out in a second. There it is. 
is so that's there's the original item and there's the negative so we've just got a few bits of silicon where it's seeped underneath which we need to trim off and apart from that it's looking pretty good seems to have picked up most of the detail um, I was expecting some air bubbles in here maybe but there aren't any or in the screw holes around there so altogether that's looking pretty perfect so the next thing is to go and pour some polyurethane resin in and then we'll make solid plastic pieces okay so now I'm going to make the solid cast I'm using Smoothcast 65D from Smoothon which is actually a rotorcast resin for putting into a mould and tilting it all around so that it covers the surface and uh, makes hollow casts but it works just as well for solid casting and that's all I've got it's polyurethane which is pretty nasty stuff so do wear gloves even if they're crap disposable ones it's um, an equal mix of parts A and B mixed together so I've already poured out equal parts I'm pretty sure that's enough to fill the mould um, so next thing I'm going to do is pour them both into one container mix them up and then pour them into the mould and make a solid cast so Containers say shake well before use, which um, of course puts lots of bubbles into the mixture. But um, as we can see, the piece is obviously upside down in the mould, which means again, uh, the same as when we did the silicon mould, the bubbles are going to rise away from the surface, which is obviously what we want. So that should give us a, ni a nice uh, clean cast of a bubble free surface. So I should give that a good mix. Pour it in. There we go. There's a bit of extra in there, so I'm just going to tip that into a couple of other moulds I've got. Um, but as you can see the bubbles are obviously on the surface and more bubbles will rise up so that should take about 10 or 15 minutes to go off and then we should end up with a nice clean cast all right it's a few minutes later and um, you can see this has turned white and it's um, still clear around the edges but it's starting to cure suddenly changes and then um, it'll take a few more minutes for the whole thing to turn completely white and solid then we'll just leave it in the mould for a few minutes before we can pull it out it's called a fast cast for a reason probably just saw those ones going as well so I poured the extra resin that I had into uh, these extra moulds which are for Iron Man's ear and the shoulder bell pivot that I made during uh, earlier during the process of the suit so we'll just leave that another few minutes and then hopefully we'll be to demould them Okay, so now we're ready to demold the pieces. Let's just pop these out first. Looks pretty good. Yep, yeah. and now we'll just do this one. Just carefully pull the silicon away from the edge. Slowly push it out. And there it is. So that's the cast and there's the original and those of course are identical I've got a bit of clean up to do around the bottom of that one but uh, there we go so that's quite a heavy heavy chunk of plastic probably fine for a costume actually although you could obviously use the same mold to um, make them in fiberglass or something hollow so there we go so just need to make another one then I've got a pair for the costume <laughs> 